Hi everyone, my name is Aaron Mary. I work at Red Hat. This talk is about Debug Info D, an HTTP client and server for distributing debugging resources to debugging tools. Uh, Debug Info D is part of the Elf Utils project, where, uh, which is a collection of utilities and libraries for handling Elf files and dwarf binaries. Uh, in this talk, I'll go over how Debug Info D works. I'll describe some key parts of its design, and I'll go over some interesting metrics collected from official Debug Info D servers run by Linux distros, such as uh, Fedora and Ubuntu. Uh, we first introduced Debug Info D during Cauldron 2019. Uh, work has been ongoing since then, and we'd like to give an update on some recent features and improvements. These uh, include new tools that make use of Debug Info D, uh, new query types, as well as some recent performance improvements for the server and clients. <laughs> uh, we'll also take a look at uh, lazy Debug Info downloading and Valgrind and GDB, which provides a significant performance boost. I'll also give a brief GDB demo showing uh, lazy downloading. Um, before I give an overview of Debug Info D and how it uh, provides tools with Debug Info, uh, I should give a brief description of what Debug Info is. Um, I'm sure many of you are very familiar with this, but I'll go over it quickly, uh, just in case there's anyone who might benefit from it. Um, so your software has a bug or a performance issue, and you'd like to use a debugger, or tracer, or profiler to help you determine the cause as well as how to fix the issue. Uh, in order to provide you with detailed information um, regarding, uh, sorry, one second. Uh, yeah, in order to provide you with detailed information, uh, debugging tools need to be able to map text and data components of object files to function names, variable names, source files, line numbers, et cetera. Uh, Debug Info contains all this metadata needed for tools to provide human readable information on the state of a process or core file. Uh, to generate it, you run your compiler <coughs> with the dash G option. Uh, compiler optimizations that speed up code can do so by rearranging and eliminating code such that instructions in the object file may not neatly correspond line by line to the source code. Uh, this can make optimized code harder to debug. Uh, for example, code might not execute the order given in the source file, or breakpoints not be, might not behave as expected. So when you're debugging, it's recommended to use uh, the dash OG option uh, to enable optimizations that have little impact on debugging. Here's a backtrace printed by Valgrind during a segmentation fault. The executable being run by Valgrind is called willseg fault. It's from a collection of crashing executables called will crash, and it's useful for intentionally causing different kinds of crashes when, when testing uh, debuggers. Um, with no debug info available, there isn't much useful information. Uh, but with debug info, um, the backtrace is complete with function names, line numbers, and you can immediately tell that the seg fault occurs during the execution of the crash function at line 19 of the will, crash, will seg fault.c source file. Uh, debug info is very useful, clearly, so how do we typically acquire it? Uh, when you're compiling your own code, you include dash G. If your program came from a package provided by your Linux distro, uh, they usually provide separate debug packages containing debug of info. Uh, there may also be separate packages for source files as well. Uh, here are some sample commands for downloading debug info from three of the most common package managers. Uh, some distros may not provide debug info for every single package. Um, in which case, you may have to rebuild the package yourself with dash G. So there are some issues with the typical ways of acquiring debug info. Um, how much of a problem each of these factors is going to depend on your particular circumstances. Um, but generally, debug info is not particularly convenient to get a hold of, even when your distro is providing all the debug packages you need. Uh, you might be downloading or de debugging a process with a large number of shared libraries, and you may want debug info for each one. 
uh, some tools like GDB may print a list of all debug info files it couldn't find, but even with that information, it can be a bit of, bit of a pain to install manually uh, and install them in a location where your tools are able to find it. And then this is complicated by having to debug remote processes or processes running in containers. Or uh, you might be inspecting a core file that includes old versions of some executable or shared libraries, and it might not be easy to track down old debug packages that match all the binaries associated with your core file. Additionally, you may need root access to install the packages. And then there's the issue of space. Uh, debug info can be quite large. Sizes range from five to 15 times that of the stripped executable or library. And uh, I've included a couple examples here, such as Firefox's libxul, which is uh, over 700 megabytes in size, and libwebkit gtk, which is about three gigabytes in size. So you might not want to have a lot of debug info installed at any given time. Ideally, you just have debug info installed related to what you're currently debugging. Uh, but curating your local collection of it, it isn't probably something you want to spend any time doing. And then depending on what you're debugging and the tools you're using, you may want source files as well, in which case some of these problems might apply a second time. So uh, debug info D helps address all of these problems. Uh, like I mentioned at the start, Debug Info D is an HTTP client and server for distributing debugging uh, resources like executables, debug info, and source files. It provides tools with easy, automatic access to these resources. User doesn't have to worry about installing the right packages, no root permissions are needed. Tools can download all missing debug info and source files and ensure they're getting the exact version of all of these with very little management or configuration needed from the user. Um, there are, it's worth mentioning that there are some performance implications to having to download all debug info and source files when you're debugging a process or core file, especially during an interactive session such as with GDB. Um, downloading many large debug info files can be time consuming, uh, but we've been working on some ways to improve this, which I'll come back to later on in the presentation. At the top of this code block, there's an example command to start a debug info D server. I've given it a port number to connect to, as well as directories containing files for the server to index. The dash F option tells the server to scan all the given directories for ELF binaries and index any that are found. Uh, dash R and dash U make the server scan directories for RPM and DAB archives as well. Uh, dash Z allows you to specify custom file extensions to be scanned, and you can also specify shell commands to run on any files found with that extension. So, for example, you can decompress an archive before debug info D attempts to scan its contents. Uh, you can see an example of this where it says accepting archive types dot ddeb followed by a bsd tar command. Under that line, there's a, a list of upstream debug info D servers. So servers can query other servers and form a federation. Uh, in this case, the server that's starting up is going to be able to query debug info D dot fedora project dot org uh, whenever it receives a request for a file that it cannot find. Uh, the Fedora project debug info D server is an uh, official debug info D server for Fedora, and it, it can serve content from all Fedora RPMs since Fedora 32. And we'll look at some other official distros in a couple slides. To query debug info D from the command line, we use the debug info D find command. Uh, before running that command, we can set the debug info D URLs environment variable with the URLs with the URL of our local server. Um, you can uh, you can include a space separated list of URLs in that environment variable, and debug info D clients will query all the servers in the list, and the requested file will be downloaded from whichever server responds first. On Fedora and possibly some other distros, you don't need to manually set this environment variable, it's already set by default. Uh, 
towards the bottom, there are two example debug info define commands, one to download a debug info file, another to download a source file. Uh, the basic idea is you just specify the type of file you want as well as the build ID associated with the file. Build IDs are hashes stored in most ELF binaries that uniquely identify specific builds of the binary and they're reproducible. So uh, executables and their separate debug info files will share the same build ID. And source files don't have build IDs, but uh, for debug info D queries, you can just provide the build ID of the debug info file that references the source file. When queries are successful, the file is saved to the local debug info D client cache, which by default is located in the .cache directory in your home directory. Um, next slide. Uh, libdebugInfoD provides a C API for issuing queries as well. It's a very simple interface. You have a debugInfoD find debugInfo function that queries servers for debugInfo with a given build ID, and there are similar functions for executables and source files. And like we saw in the last slide, um, servers listed in the debugInfoD URLs environment variable are queried, and files are cached in the uh, debugInfoD cache path. Um, path, which defaults to dog cache. Uh, there are other environment variables for configuring the behavior of debug and voting clients, uh, such as for setting timeouts or printing progress updates during, during downloading. You can check these out in uh, debug and D client config man page uh, if you're interested. So that was a quick overview of what debug info D is and a little bit about how it works. So I want to take a look now about how it's grown since being introduced about five years ago. Uh, this list was taken from the Elfutils project website hosted on Sourceware. Uh, the column I want to focus on is the distro column towards the right side of the table. It lists all the major Linux distros that run debug info D servers. So we have servers, we have a server that serves content from Prel 8 and 9 universal base images, as well as RPM Fusion content. RPM Fusion content was added just in the past month or so. Uh, we also have servers for OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, and there's a Void Linux server that's apparently uh, temporarily offline at the moment. And then there are official servers for Debian, Fedora, Alt Linux, Arc Linux, CentOS, and Ubuntu. Um, so here's a list of tools with debug info D support. A number of tools automatically inherit uh, the support through their use of Elfutils libraries. These include SystemTap, Dwarves, LiveAbigail, and the Dragon Debugger. Uh, some bin utils tools such as Object Dump and ReadElf have debug info D support, as do GDB, Dynance, Stylegrind, HanoCheck, and Delve. Uh, uh, there's some support implemented in LLVM. I believe Google's worked on their own debug info D implementation, but I don't think this has feature parity with Elfutils debug info D. Uh, LLDB does not have debug info D support yet, um, and we have included a help wanted notice here for anyone who's interested. Uh, perf supports debug info D, VS Code, IDE, inherits debug info D support through GDB. And we like to get support added to systemd, core dump D, as well as a few other tools listed here. Debug info D's web API uh, provides access to a variety of metrics and statistics using the Prometheus format. Um, to get these, you go to the slash metrics endpoint for any debug info D server. At Red Hat, we have an internal Grafana instance that monitors all known public debug info D servers by scanning their metrics. And uh, the slide, as well as the next few, contains some interesting summaries that show the scale that debug info D servers are operating at. Uh, here we show the top servers in terms of data sent per week. Uh, Fedora's server tops the list at 4.5 terabytes, and this value is growing. Uh, Arc Linux comes in second at 2.75 terabytes per week. Yeah. Sorry, let me, there we go. Um, 
corpus size is the overall size of the debugging file scanned by each debug info D server. The Fedora staging server, which is used for testing updates before rolling them out to the main Fedora debug info D server, uh, has the largest at 25.7 terabytes, and the main Fedora server is a close second at 25.6. You have Ubuntu at 18.9. Uh, database index size, um, uh, it's kind of self-explanatory, Ubuntu has the, the largest index of all the public servers at two, 297 gigabytes, Fedora servers have, both have uh, 157, and finally we show top sizes of server file descriptor caches. This cache differs from the client cache I already mentioned. Uh, to avoid having to repeatedly extract popular files from archives, each server maintains a separate cache of recently extracted files. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more when we look at some recent improvements to server performance. The server with the biggest file descriptor cache is debuginfod.usersys.redhat.com, which serves raw content, but this isn't actually a public server. It's only available in the internal Red Hat network. The Grafana instance I use to take these screenshots from is internal to that network, so it does monitor that server as well. Uh, as for public servers, uh, Fedora's FD cache comes in at 98 gigabytes and Debian at 94.8. So for the rest of the presentation, we'll look at new tools, features, and performance improvements added in the past year or so. Um, to the, both the debug info D server as well as some clients such as Valgrind. Uh, we'll look at new query types for server metadata and IMA verification. We'll also look at Elfendorf section queries as well as some applications of this query type. Um, this includes upcoming support for lazy debug info downloading and GDB's debug info D client. And this provides a significant performance improvement for GDB. Um, and I'll give, give a brief uh, demo of this at the end of the presentation. <clears throat> so first new tool we'll look at is uh, e the new EU source files tool. Uh, this is also part of the Alfie Tools project, hence the EU prefix. Um, Alfie Tools contains its own implementations of bin utils tools like read elf stack, add or two names. So, we include the EU prefix on most Alfie Tools tools to avoid any ambiguity, although there is no bin utils source files tool. Um, EU source files can list uh, all source files as well as CU, CU names using debug info downloaded uh, from debug info D if necessary. As with other Alfie Tools tools, it works with Elf executables, share libraries, separate debug info files, and core dumps. You can also give a process ID and it will print all source files or CU names associated with the process. <laughs> I have an example in the code block that shows EU source files printing all the names, file names associated with libc.so. Uh, what really takes EU source files to the next level is <clears throat> its ability to download all source files for any ELF binary or process, and it will also check whether the source files exist locally in order to avoid downloading anything unnecessarily. Um, you can also tell it not to search any local files and instead exclusively download from debug info D, and this would help ensure that build IDs have been used to verify that you have the accurate definitive set of the exact versions of all the source files um, associated with the binary or process you're interested in. Uh, EU source files organizes the source files into a directory tree and outputs as an archive of that tree. In the code block, I show um, the zip file being created and uh, being extracted from, and uh, you can see the header files from, um, you can see it includes header files from user include, um, header files, sorry, source files from glibc, user space files associated with the kernel, as well as will crash source files, which contain the actual source files for this executable. <laughs> so we've also added a new 
uh, query type for server metadata. The idea here is that you give a, you query a server for the presence of files with a given path. A uh, server will respond with the results in JSON format. And since debug info D servers can query other debug info D servers, uh, you get results for the entire federation of servers. Uh, these server, uh, these queries can be a bit time consuming, so we've included ways to set limits on the time spent uh, performing the queries, uh, such as some server command line options, like uh, metadata max time. Uh, included in the JSON results is an attribute indicating if the results are complete, so you can tell if at least one server in the federation did not uh, have time to respond with complete results. In the code block, I've included the declaration for debug info D find metadata in the in lib debug info D. Below that is debug info D find performing a metadata query for files named uh, user slash bin slash GCC. Um, the results contain all the matching files with that name along with the type of the file, its build ID, and the path of the archive that the file was uh, extracted from. In addition to searching for specific file names, you can also search all the files matching a uh, given glob pattern. It's uh, worth noting that metadata queries can only return results for elf and dwarf binaries. They don't return any results for source files. Uh, we found that in order for these queries to be fast enough uh, when providing source file results, we would have to expand the database index with additional information that would approximately double its size. So, you know, we saw a couple slides ago that database indices can be over, you know, almost, one, almost 300 gigabytes, so doubling these would obviously be something we'd like to avoid. Um, the lack of source file information from metadata queries isn't, shouldn't be too much of a problem. If you, if you really wanted to, you could eat, you use EU source files to generate a list of all the source files for some binary uh, in the metadata response, and then you could use EU source files to download all of those if, if you wanted to. So one of the useful parts of, uh, useful features of metadata queries is it allows you to map uh, file name patterns to sets of build IDs, and since you can use build IDs to download binaries, uh, metadata queries, make it easier to acquire all debugging resources for binaries matching a certain file name pattern. This capability is used by SystemTap. Uh, SystemTap lets you set custom debugging and profiling scripts to run whenever specified kernel space or user space events occur. And when these probes run, they have access to local global variables, function arguments, return values, for example. Um, all of this works best when SystemTap has, has access to debug info related to all the events it's probing. And by using metadata queries, SystemTap can probe all known versions of a given binary for a given architecture. And this is particularly useful if you're using SystemTap for live patching. SystemTap can edit all the, many of the variables in the context that its probes are running in. So with metadata queries, SystemTap can easily download debug info for a range of versions of a binary that contain some security vulnerability, for example, and live patch it. So another uh, recent, uh, oh, did I, see? I might have skipped the wrong slide. Metadata, okay. Uh, we've also recently added support for IMA verification. IMA stands for Linux Integrity, sorry, Linux Integrity Measurement Architecture, and it's a kernel subsystem that helps detect if files have been altered or corrupted. Uh, this can be used by the kernel to require IMA integrity checks before starting a process, for example. It's a fairly complex uh, spec, so I won't go into too many details. But if you want to know more, you can check out the project homepage I've listed on this slide. Um, on the debug info D side, you can optionally require valid IMA signatures for each file downloaded. This works by verifying a hash of the downloaded file <coughs> against public keys. And the keys are normally provided by your distro. Fedora, for example, has recently introduced support for 
per file IMA verification. If debug info D downloads a file and the verification fails and the file can be rejected. In the code block, I show how this feature can be controlled with the debug info D URLs environment variable. We extended the syntax to support an IMA setting for each URL on the list. Uh, before the URL, you can include one of two settings. Uh, IMA enforcing requires every downloaded file to be correctly signed and IMA passive simply ignores the signature and no verification is performed. Uh, if no IMA setting is given, then the setting defaults to passive. And you can also point uh, debug info D to a directory containing distro certificates using the debug info D IMA cert path environment variable, although on Fedora manually setting this is not necessary since debug info D knows how to use the correct defaults. So next we'll look at uh, some recent performance made to, recent improvements made to server performance. Uh, one performance issue we had plaguing debug info D had to do with kernel VDSO extraction. VDSO stands for Virtual Dynamic Shared Object. It's a shared library automatically loaded into all user space applications and it helps reduce context switching overhead for frequently used syscalls. Uh, since the VDSO is loaded into every user space process, tools like GDB are gonna be constantly querying debug info D for its debug info, and, uh, unless you happen to have the kernel debug info installed locally. Uh, the problem was that debug info D was taking way too long to decompress and extract VDSO.debug, and these queries would regularly take over 60 seconds on the Fedora debug info D server, which is way too long, especially during an interactive GDB session. Um, when the server extracts the file, it adds the file to its F FD cache, so it can be served faster when requested again. However, some client still has to wait a long time to get the VDSO debug file added to the cache, and also our LRU uh, cache wasn't prioritizing files with extra long decompression times and VDSO debug was getting evicted way too quickly. So to help with this, <coughs> we redesigned <coughs> we redesigned the cache eviction algorithm. Uh, now the server prioritizes small frequently downloaded files that are slow to extract. And with this change, VDSO.debug eviction is significantly less likely. Uh, however, some client still has to wait 60 plus seconds to get each VDSO.debug version added into the cache in the first place. We could have fixed this using metadata queries um, uh, in order to get a list of all VDSO build IDs and then set up a cron job to regularly query the server for these files. But before we did that, somebody was able to contribute a different fix for this. Uh, which I'll go over here. Uh, so extraction was taking so long because debug info D had to decompress the kernel debug info archive and then linearly search its files for vdso.debug, which unfortunately happens to be stored near the end. Uh, most compression formats don't support random access, but it turns out that the XC format does if multi-threaded compression is used. And luckily, the kernel debug RPMs, RPM and DAB archives do use XE multi-threaded compression, uh, so it is possible to decompress just the parts of the archive containing VDSO.debug or any other debug file the, the server uh, received a request for. Uh, LibLZMA does not have an API for random access reading. Uh, however, uh, implementation of this feature was added to debug info D. Uh, the speed up's pretty significant. Uh, the server is now about 200 times faster at extracting files from uh, kernel debug info archives, including VDSO.debug. So instead of taking over a minute, it now takes less than one second on the Fedora debug info D server. And I, I should point out this feature was contrib contributed by Omar Sandoval, who works on the Dragon debugger, and he wrote a nice blog post that uh, goes into more details about this, which I've included at the bottom of this slide. <clears throat> 
So let's uh, take a look at some performance improvements to debug info D clients, specifically Valgrind and GDB. Uh, both attempt to download all missing debug info for every shared library associated with the process or core file being debugged. This provides very comprehensive information for the whole process or core file, but it can take a lot of time to download all this debug info and it can take up a lot of space too. And this is a problem, many of these debug info files end up not being useful for your particular debugging session. So we want Valgrind and GDB to be more selective about which debug info they download. And uh, one way to accomplish this is lazy downloading. Essentially, we want to download only the files that are really needed and postpone downloading the unneeded ones for as long as possible. Valgrind normally attempts to download debug info when the program it's running maps a, a new text segment, usually when loading shared libraries. The majority of this usually happens during startup of the client process Valgrind's running. So the user might need to wait a fair bit of time for Valgrind to actually start running this client process. Uh, Valgrind eagerly downloads debug info and reads all the symbols they contain, but it doesn't actually make use of this information until an address or symbol needs to be described. For example, during a memcheck backtrace uh, when a memory error is found. So instead, Valgrind should postpone downloading debug info for each shared library until it really needs it, um, which we did implement, and this was added to Valgrind 3.22, uh, which was released late last year. Uh, the exact benefits, performance benefits from this are process dependent. Large GUI applications tend to see the biggest benefits uh, from lazy downloading. And in the best case, I've seen over 90% reductions in the total amount of debug info Valgrind downloads for, for large GUI uh, processes. Uh, one example would be GNOME Calendar. Uh, in the worst case, Valgrind ends up needing every debug info file for every shared library, and there's no, there's no performance benefit. But at least in this case, we know that the debug info files were really needed for Valgrind to generate comprehensive results. And the uh, added benefit from lazy, the lazy downloading implementation is that we also save time by not having to read unnecessary symbol data. And this applies even to debug info that Valgrind found locally without having to download from debug info D. In a handful of programs I tested this with, Valgrind ran about 10% faster, faster from lazy symbol reading alone without uh, download times factored in. With downloading time included as well, Valgrind, for me, in the sample I looked at, ran about 25% faster. Um, some uh, processes I, I tested this with was for Manager, GNOME Calendar, LibreOffice Writer, and GDB. Um, the, the time saved is going to depend a lot on your download speeds as well as the behavior of these client processes and this can change from run to run and version to version so uh, your results may vary but generally this is a, a nice performance boost. So the, the final topic for this talk is uh, lazy downloading in GDB. This feature is still under development and currently being reviewed upstream. Uh, GDB differs from Valgrind in that many of its commands work best when GDB has at least some debugging information regarding symbols and addresses. So for example, to set a breakpoint on a function or step into a function, <coughs> GDB should know enough about, should know enough symbol information to figure out uh, which debug info file it needs to download. So we want to we want to download the necessary parts of debug info files while postponing as much as possible. Uh, so our solution to this is to eagerly download just the GDB index from each debug info file. GDB index is included by default in debug info package for Fedora, and it's a ELF section that maps symbols and types to CUs as well as addresses to symbols. And this is enough information for GDB to be able to set breakpoints, for example, without having to download and read entire debug info files. Uh, 
uh, GDB index is only about 7% the size of the entire debug info file, so it's significantly faster for GDB to download these at startup and then lazy download full debug info when required. To download GDB index sections, we can use debug info DE section queries, which download individual sections from elf binaries that the servers index. And I've shown an example of that at the bottom of this slide. So one complication uh, to GDB lazy downloading is that we're going to need the debug line section from the debug info as well, because GDB index doesn't include source file names, and this can be a problem when you're trying to, for example, set a breakpoint on a source file and line number, because without, um, without the file name information, GDB is going to have to download all deferred debug info in an attempt to figure out where to place the breakpoint, and this obviously defeats the purpose of lazy downloading. So to avoid this, we have GDB download the debug line section from each shared library debug info, as well as a debug line stir section if, if using Dwarf 5. And uh, if the GDB commands file name argument matches a file name in the debug line header, then GDB knows to download the full debug info since that's that debug info is actually needed for the current command. If there's no match, then GDB knows to skip downloading um, that shared library's debug info. So uh, a debug line and debug line stir are quite small, averaging just 1% the size of the full debug info. So the savings from downloading them are, are well worth the effort. So that's... Um, Oh yeah, I have a summary of uh, just some sample performance improvement uh, from different GDB commands running on different processes. So for example, setting a breakpoint on Firefox's do main function, uh, GDB down with, with lazy downloading, GDB will download just 230 megabytes of debug info as opposed to 3.8 gigabytes, 94% um, reduction. And then uh, I've listed a few other commands, uh, doing a backtrace with Vert Manager, a Vert Manager process, 82% reduction, uh, opening a LibreOffice Writer core file, 87% reduction, and uh, debugging your own, starting up your own, debugging GDB, a local GDB with another GDB, 94% uh, reduction. That one's so high because presumably you're your local uh, locally built GDB has debug info, its own debug info built into it. So debug info doesn't have to bother downloading that because it's already in the binary. <laughs> okay, let's look at a, a brief demo. Let me see how I can. Make this a little bigger. I'll copy over a command. So I just want to show just really basic usage of uh, lazy downloading in GDB. So um, this command, the remove cache command that this starts with, I'm just deleting whatever debug info D client cache I happen to have installed just so everything's uh, downloaded fresh for this this example. And then we're running the debug info defined uh, program, and we're just looking up some build ID that, that doesn't exist. So, so uh, GDB starts by downloading uh, full debug info for debug info defined. Uh, it always downloads the main executables debug info. It doesn't bother downloading the index for that because the, the main executables debug info is always needed. So we can start the process. And then it's going to eagerly download. Oh, I'm going to stop the scrolling there. It's going to eagerly download all the different GDB indexes for each shared library. 
and you can see it starts off uh, it notices that oh so so this is the uh, kernel VDSO debug uh, GDB's implementation implementation for acquiring the VDSO debug is a little different from normal shared libraries so we we don't bother downloading its index to be honest I'm not even sure if it has a GDB index associated with it um, but it's so small anyway that that we just download the, the debug info for that automatically. For the rest of the libraries, it looks like only uh, index data was needed. Now if we go next, GDB decides that it needs the libc debug information to um, perform the next command. So it goes ahead and does that. And then we can try setting a breakpoint. So we'll set a breakpoint in, in libdebug and foodie. So you can see downloading separate debug info for libdebug and foodie, and it also downloads the source file um, associated with that breakpoint. And then we can uh, set a breakpoint using a source file name and line number. This is um, a breakpoint uh, for a libcurl function. So when I hit enter, uh, this is going to start downloading debug line and debug line stir for all the different shared libraries. I'll stop the scrolling and you can see, so you can see starting here on this line, it downloads debug line information for, de for libcurl and debug line string since uh, it's store five debug info. And then it sees that there's a match. There is a multi.c source file in the debug line. So it goes on to download the debug info. And then underneath that, it downloads the uh, DWZ for libcurl. And then it goes on to search all the other debug lines for multi.c in case that it needs to set another breakpoint, um, in which case it doesn't find anything else. So that's um, an example of some really basic usage. I'll also show a second example. Um, I have a, a vert manager process running in the background. I'm going to uh, connect to it with GDB and copy over, copy over the command. So for, for this example, yeah, we'll delete the local client cache just, just to make sure that this demo shows all the uh, downloading for every single file. Um, in this case, just to, just to save a, a tiny bit of time, um, we're downloading debug info from a local server that I've already set up um, at port 8002. So this is going to download super fast. This is not how fast it would download from a, from a remote server. So it very quickly um, grabs all the debug uh, GDB indexes for many of the, for all of the shared libraries, and then separate debug info for whatever shared libraries are needed to provide accurate results. And um, uh, yeah, I was um, doing some testing on the conference Wi-Fi to do what I just did. Um, connect it by downloading from the Fedora debug and foodie server. It took about 35 seconds um, with GDB index downloading. When I disabled GDB index downloading, it took about 90 seconds. So GDB index downloading offers about a 60% speed up to do what I just did here. Um, and then we can uh, make a backtrace. So to, to at certain frames in the backtrace, let me just try to scroll back to it. At certain frames in the backtrace, um, GDB might need more debug info. So for example, for one of these frames, it needs uh, libpython debug info. Um, so you can see that it, it made a downloading request there. Um, one of the most difficult parts of the implementation of this was making sure that these downloading notices don't 
appear in the middle of the, the frame description. And uh, I wanted to give uh, thanks to Andrew Burgess for helping with that, because that was probably one of the trickiest problems to solve here. Um, yeah, so it will download as we uh, uh, prepare a backtrace or display a backtrace. And the same thing for showing thread info, it will um, query whatever debug info is needed to display accurate results. Uh, and there's options to uh, remove, to not display these notices. If, if you didn't want to see this in your backtrace ever, there's, there's ways to disable that. So that's, um, yeah, that shows you some just basic usage of, of that feature. And let me go back to the, dis the proper view. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. Um, thanks for coming to this talk. And I've just included some basic information here about the uh, LVDOS project homepage. If you find any bugs or you have any re change requests, feel free to uh, submit that to the Sourceware Bugzilla. You can come chat with us at the uh, Healthy Tools channel uh, on Libera chat, and I've listed our mailing list there. Um, any questions? Yeah, it's just um, just a byproduct of the the paths GDB is using to refer to the file at the time that file is being at, at the time the the debug alt's being downloaded. We we could probably find ways to put something a little more user friendly. Um, yeah, it's just an artifact of the the particular context that the download's taking place in. But yeah, that, that's that's a fair point. Yeah. yeah. If you somehow could find the original executable uh, name, that would probably be more. Yeah, yeah, or at least say uh, down. Yeah, um, or you could say downloading debug info for debug. Yeah, that, that's still awkward too. Yeah, we should we should talk about that because um, yeah, that might confuse some people and turn them off a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's a fair point. Hello. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, uh, one of this is already on stream and one still needs to be So, every, I believe everything I talked about is upstream except for the GDB lazy downloading. That's currently under review. So it, it's been, patches have been submitted to, for, for upstream review. Everything else, I believe everything else I listed is, is upstream already. I think I passed the list. Yeah, yeah, it's just the GDB. Uh, lazy downloading. That's a uh, work in progress. Okay, this is about uh, 12 minutes, 13 minutes, 12 minutes to the top of the hour. So I think we'll call it there and give everybody a little bit of time extra to find where they need to go next. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>